everyone, I'm Clarencia. Welcome back to my A-Frame tutorial series. This is the second part of the tutorial where I'm going to be teaching you the basics like position, rotation, and also importing skins so then you can add textures over all your components. If you haven't seen the last tutorial, I would suggest you do that right now, um, just so we're all set up. Without further ado, let's get started on the lesson. You want to start with aframe.io. And you can see here that there's some actually really nice examples of what you could do when you master this framework. This is the basic boilerplate that we're going to be playing with today. But there's really cool stuff like, say, Anime UI. This is my favorite. Get started. And you want to go to the docs. Let's talk about the boilerplate code. It's really, really easy to use because you don't have to download or install anything. All you need is this library over here. This is basically the body or the container for your VR application and everything is going to live right in between these tags. What I found really handy that I didn't do before is actually visit the A-Frame school. This is going to be the tutorial that we're going to follow along next to. It just kind of gives you hints of what you need to learn but doesn't really um, take you through the answer step by step, which is what I'm going to be doing. So just skip ahead, you've already installed Glitch and now you are ready to try out some code examples. Go to this page and click here, Remix Lesson on Glitch. Glitch is really cool because you can do stuff like this. You can um, go look at the examples, you can view the source and so you don't have to keep copying and pasting and creating a new project. So you can click this here. And what it does is it copies this code and puts it into your own project so you can learn off it. Just wait for it to load a little bit. This is your version and as you can see they've got a random name here that you can just, you can go tut1 for tutorial1. Oh, tutorial1, Clary. There we go. Okay, now it's a unique name. And the solution's here, but don't look at it just yet. We don't want to give up. Go to index.html and this is where we're going to start. So now that you've cloned everything, let's look at the code more carefully. In your head tag here, you've imported the script that allows you to use this framework without having to do anything else. And inside the scene here, you've got what's called primitives. And these primitives allow you to render really, really simple objects such as boxes, spheres, and cylinders, even the sky and even the floor. Within each of these primitives, they've got something called attributes, which you can um, specify such as position, the rotation of the object, the color, and so much more. To learn a little bit more about this, you want to go back to aframe.io docs and you go all the way down and you've got the documentation about all the primitives that you can use. For example, we'll, we'll look at the box for a start. Here you've got the box like we have on our code and you've got all the attributes here you can use. So it's got, it's even got a fog attribute. You can specify the color and the depth and everything. Let's just go back to the code and see what we can do. Here I'm going to put the output next to the code. The first thing we're going to learn is how to change the position of an object. The coordinates in A frame are defined by X, Y, Z. So if you've done physics or math back in high school, you'd find this really, really familiar and I probably don't need to explain too much. But for those of you who haven't, no worries, I have done some arts and craft for um, educational purposes. Pretend that this toilet roll is your object and by default it's sitting at 000. So if you don't know, 000 is the point at which all these three chopsticks intersect with each other. So it'd be somewhere at the center of this roll. Coordinates can have both positive and negative directions. So positive x direction, Positive X will be going to the right of your screen and negative X would be going to the left of your screen. Positive Y would be going up your screen and X, oh sorry, negative Y would be going down your screen. Positive Z goes towards your screen and negative Z goes away from your screen towards you. If you don't have a toilet roll and chopsticks, that's okay. You have your right hand, which you can use for reference. Back in the day in high school, we used to call this the physics gang sign. 
Use your right hand and this only works on your right hand and you're gonna make a sign a little bit like this. Basically this is the x-axis, this is y and this is z. Another thing that I find that really helps me is actually writing X, Y, Z directly on my fingers so I can rotate it and kind of play around to see what works. The coordinates in A-frame are defined by X, Y, Z. And so if you look at these attributes here, you can see that there's three different numbers here and each one of them represents X, Y and Z. The first thing we're going to do is just, we're just going to make the box float up two meters in the air. So I'm just going to change this up to two. And you can see now that the box is all the way up here above all the other components. Pretty self-explanatory. You can do it for anything really. For example, you want to rotate the cylinder so you can see the bottom. If you look at the cylinder item here, you can see that the position is there. There's a radius you can specify, even the height. To add a rotation, all you need to do is you need to specify the rotation attribute. I'm just going to copy and paste it from the box. Just put it anywhere as long as the syntax is right. This isn't going to do anything because it's rotating over the y-axis. Okay, I'm going to interrupt the lesson for a second just to show you why rotating a cylinder over the y-axis doesn't quite work. So I'm just going to pull back up my trusty arts and crafts here. And you've got your cylinder and I'm just going to rotate it over the y-axis. So as you can see, it does work. It does rotate, but but it doesn't make any difference visually because, because the surface is uniform. So if you want to see the bottom of the cylinder, how are you going to do that? We know the Y axis doesn't work. Let's try the Z axis. And that doesn't quite work either. I still can't see the bottom. So that leaves one last axis to try out. The X axis. I'm going to grab my chopsticks and I'm going to rotate it and voila! Look, now you can see the bottom of the cylinder. To rotate it so you can see the bottom, you need to move the x-axis. Let's put this over to zero, not that it makes any difference. And say you want to rotate it 90 degrees. There we go, you've rotated it. Let's make it trickier. What if we want to stick a primitive on another primitive as if it's one object? For example, you want to do that to your sphere. You want to attach another primitive on it. The first thing you're going to do is go to your docs, which is right here. And what you want to do is you want to look at all the primitives that are available. I want to use a ring and I want to attach that to, to my sphere. Okay, here they've got the code for a basic ring, which is a tag called a ring. Here you've got the attributes of this ring. I'm not interested in any of that right now. I'm just going to copy this and paste it into my code. We're going to open the sphere tag like this and insert it in between the sphere tags. So now what we've got, we've got a parent component, which is the sphere, and we've got a ring inside it. And you can see that the ring has now appeared, but it is actually a little bit too big for me. I'm going to change the position and I'm going to make the position say one, one, one. And now we've got a ring that is somewhat attached to the ball even though it's not exactly very graciously placed. It doesn't matter. That's not my point. What I'm trying to say here is now the ring is a child component of the sphere. You can now treat the ring as if it's part of the sphere primitive. Okay, so let's, let's demonstrate this. So for example, you want to move it six meters up along the Y axis. Right, so you can see it up there now and you can also see that the ring has moved with it. And that is because the ring is a child component of the sphere and now you can treat it as if it's one component. I've actually had to record this again because um, I didn't realize it wasn't recording before so the next part of um, this tutorial might be a little bit inconsistent with what you're seeing right here but just, just bear with me and um, I'm I'm sure you'll get the point anyway. Okay, so now that we've learned how to how to create primitives and move them around in 3D space, 
we want to learn how to make these primitives a little bit more interesting. So what we've got so far is we can just specify a color and maybe you can make it look a little bit metallic, but apart from that it's pretty boring. What if you want to add, say, a brick texture on this circle or, um, I don't know, a water texture in this box? We're going to need to start importing assets into this project. To do that, we'll start with going back to A-Frame School and you're going to scroll all the way to step 5 and a little bit down so you can remix your lesson on Glitch. I'm just going to follow this link. This is just to make your life easier, by the way. You can just you can use ZAMP if you really, really want to. Um, they've given you something really plain, which is what we're going to use. Just view the source and you want to remix it and it should make you a new project with an interesting name as usual. Just wait for it to load. Again, please don't look at the solutions and try this out for yourself. First thing we're going to do is learn how to add texture. They've already done it for you here. All you need to do is put the URL of where your texture is in between these quotation marks, just like an HTML. If you go over to assets, they've already created a folder that's already got textures and everything. And if you want to upload your own, you just click on this button, get your own image. I'll just use my own logo here. Let's try this out, shall we? Say I want to put this rock texture on this cone. All you need to do is you just need to copy, go to your index.html file and I said that I want to put it on the code and so I will paste it in between this SRC tag and voila! There, my cone suddenly has a texture on it. Okay, so that was really, really easy. And you can literally, you can literally do exactly the same thing for all the objects here. All you need is an SRC attribute and a link to the texture you want to use. Note here that this link that I just pasted has HTTPS in front of it. And just remember any asset that you're using has to be served over HTTPS or it won't show up. Okay, this environment still looks a bit empty. We want to add some sort of wall or like and um, a background around it, right? What you actually need is an A sky tag. And what this does is obviously as per the tag name, it adds a sky. All you need for this is just maybe a solid color. So you can go color equals, um, I want a pink sky. So let's just try pink, see what happens. Voila, now you've got a pink sky, but that's still too plain and boring. What if you want to add something like an image? All you need to do is something called an equal rectangular image. You can get lots of free ones, say on Flickr. So I'll just show you how to get there really quickly. You're here on Flickr and now they've got all these equal rectangular images that you can use. And um, let's see, where do I want to go? Like say I want to use, I want to use this. Okay, now it's loaded. You can see, you can look around the image right here. And I noticed that the camera is initially like way up here. So you are looking down. You just want to download it. Um, say you want original size. After it downloads, you just go back onto Glitch, go to Assets and upload it like you would before. Um, let's go on my downloads. I think this is the one, so you're just gonna open it up, wait for it to upload. Okay, now it's finally uploaded. You go through the same process. You just, you just pull it up, click on it, copy the URL and you're gonna go back to your index.html file under a sky, go to the SRC attribute and paste it. Voila, there it is, there it is. Now the only thing missing is a floor. What you can use for a floor is something called a plane. A plane is a flat surface. You just gotta rotate it to make sure that it's in the right place. To be parallel to the floor, you wanna set the X rotation to negative 90 degrees. I'm not gonna bother downloading another asset. I'm just gonna use what's already in here. I'm gonna be really boring and use the same pattern because I can. Go back to index and just paste it in there. And there we go. Now we've got, we've got a proper environment 
with proper walls and a proper floor. All right, so we got everything done. We got a ceiling, we got a floor, and we know how to get primitives in the 3D space and also um, add our own custom colors and textures over it. But what I'm about to show you next is something that will make your life so much easier. What you want to do is you want to go open your scene in a new window instead and we've already got it open here. What I'm about to show you is something called the inspector tool. Um, it's not like your usual browser inspector tool, this is especially for A-frame. If you're on the Mac it's Control option i if you're on Windows I think it's um, Control alt i um, But anyway here I've I've opened up the inspector tool and look at this, suddenly we have a whole new perspective on everything. And you can even go below the floor, below 000 to see what everything's like. And it's pretty cool. With this inspector tool, it's really cool. You've got all your components here. Um, you can click on a sphere and you can see its position and just just all the different attributes that you can see in the docs and you can you can even change it here. For example, I want to change this cube. I'll click on it. I can scroll down. I can change its color to something like zero 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 what i can do now is instead of changing position here you can actually click and drag this and you can just you can put it anywhere you can put it up here and the cool thing about this is that you can you can really you can really go hard with just placing things on wherever you want and looking around to see if it's in the right place and then you can just you can just look at these positions and everything and you just you just copy it instead of having to like instead of having to type it in yourself and then like and then checking the output to see if it's correct you can just do it here it's just it's nice it's a nice little click and drag tool all right so that wraps up this tutorial for today we will be continuing on in the next lesson remember to like and subscribe if you like what you see and if you want to learn more feel free to hit the comments below if you have any questions i would be more than happy to answer lastly see you next week